I'm actually a tech educator. I mostly work for a vocational high school in addition to working for the Internet Archive. And a lot of what I do is help people use computers in order to help them do the things they need to do in their lives. Basically with a um, sort of... This is Steve. Yes. This is Steve. I think you may have the may browse have the independently browse button still on, the red, still on the red two arrows at the two top, right, top right, because we're nope, not advancing the slides. The slides. They're not I advancing for us. For us. Uh, I wasn't advancing them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was still talking. Everything's good. Okay, so when we were talking about library as classroom, right, so people can see this going back and forth, yes? You're good. You're good. Awesome. Thank you. So when Michael and I were talking about libraries, classroom, I do tech education, et cetera, et cetera. And so for me, most of what I do is in a sort of a public library, but also sort of public tech setting as a librarian educated, but not necessarily as a librarian um, in working in a library. So one of the things that I often think about, and I'm going to specifically talk uh, about here, is the idea of the library just is a classroom. So not as a classroom, but basically that's what it is. And I'm going to use one example of somebody that I talk about and that I work with and sort of what his thing is and how we help him and why that's what libraries do. So basically most of what I do is work with digitally divided people. I live in a town of 4,500 people in central Vermont and um, a lot of the people who live around here don't have access to the internet or they're just getting it or they're just learning how to use whatever. So this is Ed. Ed is in his late 60s, probably maybe early 70s. He's trying to use Facebook because he met a lady that he really likes and he wants to interact with her and sort of get to know her. But in order to do that, he has to log into Facebook, remember his password, figure out how Facebook and his email work together and all that other stuff. Super challenging. And if Ed doesn't have a buddy who can help him with that, Ed's going to have a really hard time moving forward with the things he wants to do with his life, which is make friends, maybe find some other jobs. He does some volunteer work, but he would be able to do stuff that was more interesting for him if he could do more uh, with the computer. And so the big deal with Ed is Ed just doesn't need to come to a library class necessarily and take a technology class to understand technology. He doesn't need to understand what technology can do for him. He understands that. What he needs to understand is sort of how technology works in the world as a concept and then figure out how he can sort of apply that basically to himself. And the big trick here is that Ed needs to learn that from somebody who is not trying to sell him something or tell him that he's doing it wrong, right? I mean, the big thing about Facebook and Google and everything else is that they've got an angle, they've got a thing that they want, and they're often sort of marketing and trying to get demographic information. No big deal. We just know that they're businesses. But Ed could use a neutral place to get information. And the neutral places, especially when you're outside of public schooling, are fewer and fewer and fewer. So my big thing is I'm really sort of into the crit lib approach, basically. And um, one of the things that I found really helpful to me when I started in librarianship was reading uh, Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which is all about sort of helping people help themselves. And so he talks about how a lot of education is sort of this banking model where a student is just kind of this empty vessel to be filled up with information from the teacher. So you say, I don't have anything. You give a thing to me, and then I have a thing. But I essentially have your thing. And that's not necessarily a model that's particularly useful. However, what that does is it just basically means everybody becomes sort of teacher bots. Again, nothing wrong with teachers. But what we need is for people to be able to sort of think for themselves and assess how things solve a problem for them. How Facebook solves a problem for me has nothing to do with how Facebook solves a problem for Ed. And what happens is that there are inequalities, inclusion issues especially, those can get reinforced as we get information from people who have a particular slant that isn't our slant. Again, no big deal. Everybody's trying to help here. Nobody's being a villain or a bad person, but people need to find a way to make these real for themselves. And so the sort of angle here is what we need is kind of a worldwide way to approach education as a way of sort of making everybody be a better them, whatever them means. And it's hard, right, because I might have an idea of, like, what a better kind of person would be in the world. 
uh, what a better person would be for me personally. If all of my neighbors were quieter at night, that would be awesome for team me, but I'm not the world. I'm just an individual person, and people need to have to be able to be better versions of them to, in order to be fully human, basically, is what we say. And so the, the word for this, the buzzword, and go look at the links and you can read about this in a way that makes sense for you, is praxis, the idea of informed action, that you're moving towards a better you, reevaluating whether what you're getting is working for you, and educating yourself with the help of tools that are given to you by other people without an agenda essentially. And so you can look at it as sort of a list like this. You kind of unlearn what you knew, the banking model, which as people have pointed out in the chat, it can really be a problem with people who are already facing a lot of inequality. Um, you learn the stuff you learn, you relearn some stuff, and you think, think about it. This part, the quiet reflection, the how did that work for me personally? How does that work for my family, for the people I care about? How does that help me with my job? How does that help me with my life that I want to lead? And then you evaluate and you work it around. Uh, the sort of uh, fussy way of looking at this is theory, application, reflection, evaluation, theory. You have a theory, and you guys understand. But you apply the theories, and then you think about, well, how did that work? Then you go around again. So in library school, this is like a, what we call the ISAR system, information storage and retrieval, and then you say, oh, is it working? Is the system working? And I think everybody else has had terrific ideas about all the wonderful things that they do, and that's all part of this. The big part that I sort of want to stress in the critical sort of librarianship point is wrapping it around. Once you've got a theory and you evaluate it, you make a new theory, and you do this forever. This is your life. You continue to evaluate it. You continue to do this. You continually think about this. And I mean, that's not the bad news. That's the good news. That's the lifelong learning thing, which I think is delightful. And so my sort of wrap up on this is the library is the classroom where we don't just learn the stuff or the tests, which is becoming more and more of a problem in America, but the library is the classroom where we each learn to be human for what that means for us, and you can replace human with where we learn to be citizens, which nominally is why we have public libraries in America, where we learn to be parents, where we learn to be neighbors, where we just learn to be people. So I think the library is the classroom for after the classroom or outside the classroom or enveloping all the classrooms, and Praxis sort of helps us get to be where we need to be on a personal level. Thank you guys very much for your attention.